Surgical anatomy of the breast. A line drawn from the anterior axillary fold to the groin fold forms the mammary line and on both sides this is the area where polythelia and polymastia can be seen. Epidermal buds which get canalized to form epidermal pits will slowly get elevated to form the nipple. Failure to do so in 4% population leads to inverted nipple. These pits are basically ectodermal structures which are going to form the functional part of the breast or known as the parenchyma. They dip into the mesenchyme or the mesoderm to form the stroma of the breast or the supporting structures of the breast which come from the mesoderm. As they do so, these epidermal pits have now formed into cords which later get canalized to form ducts. The ducts then branch out to form 15 to 20 ducts. In response to the maternal hormones, the breast could be slightly enlarged and there could be a few drops of milk which come out in the first few days of life. It is absolutely normal. Other congenital defects which are seen are symmastia where there is a congenital webbing between the breasts and these can be corrected by the plastic surgeons. Pollen syndrome is hypoplasia of or absence of the breast with hypoplasia of the costal cartilages, rib defects, aplasia or absence of the pectoralis major muscle and also subcutaneous defects. In the worst case scenario, one could even see brachysyndactyly where the arm is plastered to the chest wall. Acquired hypoplasia of the breast can occur iatrogenically before puberty when there is a trauma, infection or radiation therapy to the breast. One should also note that polythelia which is seen in about 1% of the population may be associated with other anomalies of the urinary tract such as renal agenesis or renal cancer. Cardiovascular anomalies such as hypertension, congenital heart defects and conduction defects and pyloric stenosis, epilepsy, ear defects and arthrogryphosis which means curved joints. One should note that polymastia can be seen in Turner syndrome and Fleischer syndrome. Imagine 15 to 20 cones which are oriented in such a way that the base is towards the pectoral fascia and the apex is towards the dermis of the nipple. Inside each breast cone at the apex is the lactiferous duct, more proximal to that is the lactiferous sinus and then more proximal are the ducts which finally end up in the alveoli. Now each of these lobe contain many lobules as shown in the diagram. Each breast lobe is cone shaped or sector shaped and this is the reason a breast abscess is sector shaped and this is the septa which separate every lobe. Cooper's ligaments run in between the lobes and also run from the pectoralis major fascia to the dermis of the nipple which helps to support the breast. The extent of the breast is from the midline to the latissimus dorsi laterally and from the clavicle above to the ribcage below. Any nodule seen in this area after MRM should be thought of to be as a recurrence. The axillary tail of Spence is the normal breast structure which extends into the axilla and one should be able to differentiate this between an axillary accessory breast. An axillary accessory breast will have its own nipple and areola. The nipple may look like a pit whereas the axillary tail of Spence does not have a nipple areola in the axilla. In addition to that the tail of Spence can be easily differentiated when the arm is adducted it forms a v-fold or the v-sign. Look very carefully at the blood supply or the axillary artery. The pectoralis minor muscle has been reflected. The portion of the artery proximal to the pectoralis minor tendon is the first part of the axillary artery around which lies the apical group of lymph nodes. Here is the superior thoracic artery which supplies the chest wall and the breast. Behind the pectoralis minor muscle in the fat of the axilla there are two arteries and also the medial or the central group of lymph nodes. The thoracoacromial artery supplies two bones and two muscles. It supplies the clavicle and the acromion and the deltoid and the pectoralis major muscle in addition to which it also supplies some part of the breast. The lateral thoracic artery which is also a branch of the second part goes along the anterior border of the pectoralis major muscle and along this artery are the anterior group of lymph nodes. The third part of the artery distal to the pectoralis minor muscle has the subscapular artery going along the latissimus dorsi along which lie the posterior group of lymph nodes and the continuation of the axillary artery 
along which lie the lateral group of lymph nodes. The last two branches are the anterior and posterior circumflex which go around the humerus. All the lymph which drains from the lateral, the anterior and the posterior group go into the central group. The central group in addition may also receive lymph from the interpectoral or the rotus lymph node. The apical group of lymph nodes receives the lymph from the central and plus minus from the rotus group of lymph nodes. The venous drainage of the breast mainly takes place through the intercostal veins, the internal mammary veins and the axillary veins. One should note that the intercostal veins drain into the Batson's venous plexus which goes around each and every spine also all the way up to the skull and all the way down to the sacrum. This explains how a carcinoma of the breast can transmit to the bones which is mainly the spine, the pelvis, the sacrum, the skull and the CNS. The take home message is that one should know the extent of the breast so that any nodule after excision may be a carcinoma or a sarcoma because the breast develops from the ectoderm and the mesoderm. When one sees polythelia or polymastia, please look for other congenital defects. Remember that any injury through the breast, radiation or even surgery can cause hypoplasia of the breast in females. One should revise the lymph node anatomy before doing a dissection. Remember that any carcinoma can cause shortening of the corpus ligaments which leads to puckering or dimpling. The axillary tail of Spence is a normal structure and the carcinoma can spread via the Batson's plexus into the spine, skull, pelvis and the CNS.